Hey, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm, let's wait to uh, give a few minutes, probably a minute or two, for everybody to join in, and then we will kick off. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, so it's a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are based out of, yeah. <clears throat> and welcome to today's session. I'm Nagesh Reddy. I am senior solution architect here at Kibal, and it's it, it's a pleasure that I would be presenting. I would be a presenter today. Now, uh, what is this webinar is uh, webinar all about, yeah? So we will be uh, diving into this exciting world of basically Spark and specifically in Spark also Spark 3.3 and its integration with Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, specifically, <clears throat> and since we are talking about Kibal, uh, so both these uh, uh, Spark 3.3 and Jupyter on Kibal platform. We'll try to explore the powerful tools which come together and uh, which will help revolutionize the data processing, analysis and machine learning capabilities in, uh, on the Kibal platform. Now, uh, who the session is for, yeah? As basically for anybody who is a data professional, a business leader, or just like somebody who is trying to uh, start from scratch or just uh, starting his uh, data analyst or data uh, career based on data, right? so it would be uh, good for them and and anything related to big data analytics. Okay, so let's get started and see how we can unlock the full potential of Spark 3.3 with Jupyter Notebooks on Kibal. Yeah. Okay, again, welcome everybody. Now, as I was talking about uh, that, we would be uh, talking, uh, we would be doing Spark 3.3 and Jupyter Notebook. So Spark 3.3 is, it's not one of the latest per se, but it has been uh, around for uh, some time now. Uh, but, but what we'll be talking about is uh, well, how Spark 3.3 and Jupyter Notebooks come together, how this is synergized, and how they help you to kind of uh, get most out of your data, yeah? your basically data, ED and other stuff as we will talk about. Then uh, uh, we'll we'll also kind of touch base on something which is uh, what are the future trends and what is the Kibal vision basically yeah? and uh, what in Kibal we intend to do. Now, uh, just before getting started with all the uh, Spark and Jupyter stuff, I would like to just give a brief on uh, what Kibal is, yeah, and uh, some facts on Kibal. So, Kibal is a data platform, uh, and it's a cloud native. It's a cloud native, and we started quite early in this journey of cloud-based big data analytics. Per se, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, based on all open source engines. Uh, we have got Spark, we have got Presto, we have got Airflow, uh, we have got Hadoop and Hive. All these are open source, yeah. And we are pioneers in this. The, the, the guys who started this ball were pretty much who have written the code on Hive and other stuff. Yeah. So they uh, <clears throat> so open source and, and cloud is part of our DNA. Uh, market adoption we have a broad base of customers pretty much in all the domains and, and pretty much diverse uh, in locations. We are based on our customers and our uh, employees are based across the across the world. Our customer first, we have made sure that customers save uh, a lot when they uh, onboard onto Kibal. And that's, as you can see the numbers, and this is something that uh, is growing every day. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the platform is uh, proven tested. It's, it runs more than an exabyte of, the, of data every month. And that's, that's again, as we speak, it's growing. Uh, global presence, I already spoke about it. We have a 24 by seven support to make sure that Customers across the world uh, 
can access to our support as and when required. Uh, and and we do have a powerful free trial. If you want to get started, uh, you can just log on to uh, uh, just go to cubeball.com and you should be able to register and get started in few few minutes. And of course, since uh, open source, uh, since we are based on open source, uh, uh, we have a very top, a strong uh, tech team and a lot of data experience uh, in our team. Now, uh, we, we have seen numerous data platforms here, and, and there are numerous data platforms in the market today. But who is this data platform targeted, specifically the Cubal data platform targeted? So if you look at it, it's basically pretty much everybody, all the personas in an enterprise here. It's a, it could be a data engineer who wants to kind of do the, the data analysis, or they want to write their ETL tool, uh, rather than ETL tool, ETL, uh, basically moving the data from, uh, from source to a destination, or uh, somebody like a business executive who who doesn't have much knowledge on the technology side of it, but they, he still can go uh, get on Cubal and kind of start looking at the dashboards that are developed by a data engineer kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, similarly, data scientists, uh, but we'll talk about that because the notebooks and Jupyter notebooks and all those things, everybody uh, knows those. Any data scientist or all the data scientists pretty much use uh, Jupyter notebooks, so we have that as a very powerful tool uh, to be used here. So uh, definitely Cubal is something which is for built for a data scientist and data analysts and business users. Anybody who knows a simple SQL can come and write a, a, write a query, get the uh, data, uh, data or basically the analysis that they require to uh, uh, build the next big product or uh, next solution per se, uh, running the data on the last data sets which is stored. Uh, so it could be a terabyte or petabytes. Yeah. So uh, if you see, uh, Shival is something which is built for everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody or pretty much everybody in an organization in an enterprise. Now let's uh, talk about Spark 3.3. Spark has been Apache Spark has been in. Uh, it's I believe it's it's more than uh, 10 years and uh, 10, 10 12 years uh, in making now, and it's it has it has been doing amazing to be frank. Yeah. And uh, in almost, at least personally, if I see it, every organization that is dealing with some decent side of data sets, yeah, uh, Spark is being used. Spark is not being used from a data volume perspective. Yeah? It's used from, uh, let's say, uh, something like a real-time processing, Spark comes into play. Or, or let's say, if you have uh, a, a small data set as well, but it actually enhances or basically improves your uh, productivity. The reason being there are a lot of built-in functions, there are a lot of stuff which is readily available. So you don't have to write too much of code, yeah? Uh, so you can get your applications up and running very quickly. So that's one of the other reasons that Spark has gained its popularity. Now, why, uh, what's Spark about, what about Spark 3.3, yeah? Why we are talking about that today? So one of them is basically uh, Kubel has, uh, it's, it's uh, Kubel, has got a fully functional Spark 3.3 launch. Uh, and when we talk about Spark 3.3, it has it comes with a significant improvements, yeah. Uh, both improvements in terms of functionalities, uh, basically the second is performance, and then of course it, it adds other data sources. Uh, so these make sure all these capabilities, the functionalities and performance enhancement, make sure that Spark 3.3 is better in terms of creating your next AI use case, in terms of managing your next petabyte of data, or basically make sure that you, you have a better uh, advanced analytics, or basically uh, you can build, based on the analytics, you can build the next big, uh, next product, which would be a killer. Okay. So uh, we will talk about what, uh, what are the features uh, and others as we kind of move on. Now, uh, so I was talking about the performance yeah, in Spark 3.3. The first thing that comes is basically uh, the Bloom filters, yeah. Now, Spark has introduced Bloom filters, which enhance the performance. And it's, it's basically, of course, uh, what it does is uh, it reduces the data shuffle uh, considerable. The reason for that is basically it tries to filter out any joins, yeah. Joins are pretty expensive. And when you have joins, uh, uh, there is a lot of shuffle as well. 
Now, what it tries to do is basically filter out early on to the intermediate data sizes, basically. Filter out the data, uh, which, and reduce, which uh, kind of reduces the shuffle and uh, ultimately the computation that is required. Now, that's, that, that's it actually enhances your performance and, and what it has been uh, observed is basically it, it improves your speed by There have been query enhancements, uh, a couple of query enhancements, and uh, and uh, one of them is propagating intermediate empty relations, uh, uh, basically again uh, aggre uh, through aggregate unions, uh, aggregating and unions. Again, this improve uh, this leads to a significant faster executions. And then second is basically it it optimizes uh, one row query plans, uh, basically using an AQ optimizers. The third one is supporting or eliminating uh, eliminating kind of limits in any AQ optimizers, basically. Yeah. So, so all these uh, a lot go in details per se. Yeah, but these are the uh, higher level three uh, uh, aggregates uh, AQ optimizers that have been added to the, which improves the performance uh, of Spark. Uh, then uh, there's been addition in Parquet uh, complex data by uh, data types support. There was actually support, uh, but I think it was uh, it was more on uh, not on the complex data types per se. Uh, but now it has been added that structs, arrays, and maps. All the three have been added. And and uh, Spark with the benchmarks, what has been observed is Spark obtains at, at an average of around 15x uh, improvement when scanning a struct fields, and then anything like 1.5 5x when reading arrays uh, comprising elements of struct and map types. Yeah. Again, this improves uh, performance pretty drastically. So all these improvements, if you see the bloom filters, uh, the query execution enhancement that is, uh, and then the parquet uh, complex data types. Yeah, all the three kind of improves your performance drastically. Okay, let's move on. What, what are the new features? Yeah, one of the new features that has uh, come into play is basically increased ANSI SQL base compliance, and that that's one of the features that is uh, pretty important to make sure that it is well adopted. And uh, it's more rather than it's, it's already adopted, but it is it, it can be used in more use cases. Yeah. Now, uh, because it can uh, support more ANSI SQL now, the migration from traditional data warehouses to see, uh, the Spark 3.3 becomes a, a tad more easier and more uh, kind of adaptable. Yeah, so it's, it's a seamless kind of migration that happens. Yeah, uh, that's that's one. And basically, if you see uh, uh, when I say about increased ANSI SQL compliance, there are two main features that comes into play: is basically interval data types and implicit uh, casting in ANSI mode. Yeah. These are the uh, two features basically uh, which improves that ANSI, but there are there are a couple of others. Support of uh, built-in functions. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of functions that have come into play. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, so there are, there are a lot of uh, built-in functions that have come into play. Uh, apart from the uh, data functions that has been added, uh, then. Uh, Error handling functions and other other capabilities. What it has got is basically it has got other functions which are more like from an AIML perspective, especially AML, linear regression, statistical string processing, and encryption functions. These are more uh, tu tuned towards uh, the ML side of it. But apart from that, it has got the error handling capabilities, which make sure that uh, uh, Spark is much more. Uh, you can write your uh, code faster. At the same time, it takes care of your error handling. Uh, the error handling may, uh, and one more capability that has been added with the built-in functions is it 
clearly tells you what is the, what is the exception basically let's say you are writing a sql query which one divided by zero which will give you a, 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 in, a division by zero error yeah it will clearly tell you this is what the error is earlier it, it was not possible so there's a lot of built-in functions that have come now uh, enhanced api coverage for pandas this is something which was uh, uh, it is there but uh, it has been improved over a period of time and this and again if you see all of these date uh, data functions and other other types have been added to uh, uh, to this uh, coverage basically uh, uh, where it can be converted much easily now this was earlier a pain uh, which is uh, which is improved with this uh, uh, date time and other data types conversions uh, specifically and all these features, okay, all the features that we spoke about, there are uh, underlying, there are two things. One is basically it makes your data manipulation and analysis more intuitive and powerful. And secondly, if you look at the first point that we spoke about that, uh, the migration from the traditional data warehouses to Spark 3.3 becomes easier because of the Hansi SQL uh, capabilities. Uh, we spoke about pretty much like uh, the other functional. I just trying to reiterate basically date time functions that we spoke about in uh, uh, pandas, error handling functions, the try uh, try catch uh, similar to try catch, but it has try subtract, try multiply, sum, average, and a couple of these functions, built-in functions, which makes uh, the code e uh, uh, write the code much easier. Uh, complex types we spoke about, which in Spark a, uh, Spark a string functions have been added. And there are a couple of other ANSI aggregations that are uh, added to uh, added to it. And uh, apart from that, there are a, couple, a few others that have been, but those are at the high levels uh, functions, basically. Now, moving on. Now, uh, you see, we, we saw about uh, Spark and specifically uh, Spark 3.3, what are the features, what are the new functions which are being introduced and uh, how they enhance your performance and other stuff. But uh, the other thing uh, that we were supposed to talk in the uh, webinar was Jupyter, yeah, the Jupyter notebook. And, and uh, these two becomes a, a, a killer combination for any data analyst or a data scientist. Uh, those are available on Kibal. Yeah. Now, uh, Jupyter is, and again, since we spoke about that, Kibal is something which is built on open source tools. It's, uh, it's an open source tool. Uh, specifically built for interactive computing and uh, powerful data visualization for anybody uh, anybody who is working on the data, specifically the data scientists and engineers. We'll talk about the features which are specific to those. Co-functionalities, it's, it's basically uh, Jupyter is built for, uh, and, and why it has been kind of, uh, uh, it has got that adaptability across the community. The reason is it has got so many languages that it supports. It has got Python, it has got Scala, R, Java, and all these, yeah, uh, all these languages. Uh, so anybody who knows any of these languages can go down to uh, Jupyter Notebook and start working on it. Then uh, finally, uh, where it is used, yeah, basically, it is EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis, the visualizations and the interactive coding. And all these are required for any of your AI or uh, machine learning projects that you build. I'll talk about uh, the next few slides. We'll talk about what Jupyter Notebook provides for uh, uh, provides to a data engineer, and similarly for a data scientist. From a data engineering perspective, what it does is it helps you in help it helps you in uh, getting your prototypes quicker, uh, making sure that uh, you can test your uh, data pipelines uh, faster than you can do your uh, experiments with diff different formats, transformations, processes, integration, and all these can be done in an interactive way so that you can build your things faster. Documentation collaboration, there are, there's a part of, uh, in, in Jupyter Notebook, uh, if you see uh, that you can write a lot of uh, documentation, correct? With, with something called as Markdown. Uh, you can use text images and other stuff which will help you document those steps. Uh, document everything in, 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 a, in a notebook, which helps you kind of collaboration uh, to make sure that you can communicate with other team members. Uh, educational def uh, resources, definitely it does uh, because uh, it becomes, as, as you, anybody who is interested in, let's say, 
a data analysis need not know a full suite of all these languages they 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 can come in with the basic understanding of the programming language and they get on it uh, but uh, it, it, uh, jupyter notebooks with jupyter hub and all those things have, has become a very a good resource for education purposes debugging and optimization that's that's uh, as a data engineer you are uh, you want to make sure that you can uh, basically write, execute, and at the same time, uh, debug the code. Yeah. And it makes sure that, uh, Jupyter makes sure that you can do all these uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, then uh, integration with big data tools. When we say big data tools, it's basically, uh, in our case, we are talking about uh, Apache Spark uh, for making sure that it can do your processing on the large data sets which are, uh, which are there in your data lakes. Yeah. So for data engineers, if you look at the high level, uh, basically you you get your pro you can do your prototyping much faster. You can do your debugging. Uh, you can collaborate with your team members uh, with enhanced documentation, and uh, uh, and then you have the big data. It can integrate with the big data tools like Spark, which makes sure that you can you can uh, do the uh, processing for the large data sets that are available for you. Uh, from a data science perspective what Jupyter provides. It's, it's, it's something similar, but for any data science projects or, or objectives, the first thing that comes is basically data exploration and analysis. Uh, basically, it makes sure that uh, you can you can understand the data, you can uh, analyze the data before you start building your model. Yeah, that's, uh, it, provide, it does provide you that. Then the second is basically model development and testing. Again, um, in case of data engineer, it is uh, basically building your ETL, the transformations and processing, where in this case, it is more of model development and testing. It makes, uh, uh, because of the iterative nature, you can, uh, uh, Jupyter, the way it is kind of designed by iterative nature, it, it helps you fine tuning the machine learning models and make sure that it, yeah, you can experiment with different algorithms and parameters. Fine tuning and other things can be done. Sorry. No, much quicker in using Jupyter Notebook. And visualizations, uh, you got a lot of visualizations which are available specifically. You can have Matlab, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Plotly, and all these uh, uh, visualizations tools or something which are uh, kind of uh, uh, a must as well as loved by the data scientists per se. So visualization is provided. Then collaborative research, it's the same thing that goes back to the data uh, engineers that we spoke, spoke about where you can write a lot of uh, documentation and other stuff. And uh, in, in case of Cubal, uh, one thing I forgot is basically you can integrate it with GitHub or Bitbucket uh, so that again, uh, from a, a source control also it becomes easier. Uh, then of course you can, since uh, there is documentation and other stuff that can be provided, you can you can uh, build your presentation or reporting on top of Jupyter notebooks, uh, which can be shared by shared to uh, uh, other team members, your your uh, peers, or anybody across that. And uh, Cubal has got that capability where you can uh, make the notebooks uh, read only, uh, make it more like a dashboard and kind of uh, publish it. So yes, so uh, uh, as I said, uh, when we started, we said that Cubal is something which is that can be used by a data scientist or data engineer. Uh, your business users and other guys. Uh, so uh, Jupyter Notebook is one which is used uh, used by both the data scientists and data engineers to write their ETL jobs and their ML models, creating ML models. Now, uh, since we spoke about where, uh, how does Spark 3.3 or basically Spark and Jupyter uh, are good or basically enhance support each other yeah so there are three things that uh, we would be talking about today is one is basically seamless integration uh spark 3.3 .3, uh, uh integrates seamlessly with jupyter notebooks and what it does is uh, basically if you have to do simple uh, queries and other stuff you, you usually use the spark shell and other stuff yeah with spark uh, with jupyter you get uh, this vastly improved user experience because you can have all these plots and other things which you can visualize and definitely it improves the productivity because uh, installing any libraries and, uh, and all those things on Jupyter becomes easier for you. And and uh, of course with Cubal it it's even much even more easier because you you can go ahead and install the uh, manage your Python libraries using the environment uh, apart from the Jupyter notebooks. Real time data exploration uh, again since it is visual UI driven uh, uh, real time data exploration 
uh, gives you a lot of uh, it kind of make sure that okay one is you can get the results right away uh, and uh, with the visual feedback which make sure that you can get your things faster in uh, going back to the product and then support for complex queries uh, and since spark is there uh, all the features which we spoke about uh, more from spark 3.3 performance improvements built-in functions and all those things all all those capabilities will be available for you uh, when you are using the Jupyter Notebooks. And all the, uh, these will definitely improve your in complex data queries, your analysis, and basically it will make sure that uh, uh, you the, the notebooks which are created are simple to understand, easy to understand, and uh, collaborate, and you can collaborate with your team members. Now, uh, I'll just case studies basically and uh, what can do that if you see look at the spark speed uh, and with work with works with Jupyter so what it does is basically it makes sure that is you get an expedited insights because if you don't have that speed yeah that spark provides you you might uh, end up kind of running a query where the results might take longer uh, and and because it takes longer then uh, your user experience is not that great or the user the product really comes down because he has to wait for the responses to come back with spark uh, improved performance and ANSI capa uh, capabilities anybody can write those queries and other stuff and, and get those results much quicker yeah. uh, in ml development you have got both yeah one is basically you can write your ml uh, in code python and other stuff using Jupyter. at the same time you can use the capabilities of spark spark ml to write your uh, ml processing which makes um, uh, building models a simplified process and finally uh, we spoke about this uh, that Jupyter provides a lot of visualization tools matplotlib uh, plotly and other stuff which helps in your data visualization and make sure that it is more interactive and uh, you can uh, do your exploratory data analysis much easily when you are using Jupyter uh, along with spark moving on uh, I mean, we spoke about uh, what would be new, what would be in future. Uh, a couple of things have been kind of being worked out. One is basically auto ML. Uh, auto ML is, is is being used by uh, a lot of uh, a lot of the data science community nowadays. Uh, that's one. Uh, and then uh, basically, we want to kind of integrate. We are now uh, with with the intent of basically AI. Uh, AI and specifically the large uh, model LLM basically. Uh, we, uh, Chibal actually will try to make sure that we have this path uh, which is which provides you that processing along with Jupyter to make those uh, uh, LLM models uh, possible in Chibal. Yeah. So that's something that is uh, coming up in uh, Chibal and you can do it in Chibal yeah, as we speak. Now, just kind of a recap uh, uh, about uh, Spark 3.3 and Jupyter. You both are, it's it's a harmonized technology that uh, we have built at Kibal, the Spark 3.3 and Jupyter, which can deliver accelerated insights uh, as well as seamless experience for any of the AIML or basically an ETL uh, workflows. Streamline innovation, uh, make sure that it is you can do all the stuff that is pre-processing, processing, deployment, enhancing, improving the performance and uh, basically innovation. Uh, future ready, as I said that you now with uh, Spark, you should be able to uh, get your LLM, but apart from that, LLM models created, but apart from that, it's, it's uh, scalability is one thing uh, that is very important for building any of these models and Kibal provides that. Now, uh, before we jump on to uh, a quick demo of uh, how Kibal looks like, what is the Jupyter Notebook, uh, what does it provide, I, I would like to give you a brief on what the overall architecture looks like in Kibal. So Kibal has got uh, these three pieces per se. Yeah? There's a middle piece which is called as uh, in this diagram, in this architecture, the middle one is, is basically the Kibal control plane uh, where you have uh, where you have got the UI and basically all the engines that are provided by Kibal, that is Spark, Hadoop, Presto, IUF flow, and TensorFlow. 
it can integrate with other third party uh, ml libraries ml ai libraries as well like SageMaker in aws and other others yeah. uh, so you have got this ui where uh, you can uh, use tools like explore analyze notebook uh, you have got uh, a workspace workbench you have got dashboards you have got templates and other stuff uh, where yeah, it makes life easier for your data analyst or a data uh, business users yeah apart from uh, apart from the jupyter notebooks and other stuff which is for your data and engineers and data scientists now uh, that's all the control plane where you you uh, you manage everything on Tribal. You have got your left side of it, which is your cloud. Basically, it could be an any of the hyperscaler uh, clouds like AWS or a GCP, uh, wherein your data is stored in their data leaks, or it could be the data warehouse uh, uh, that your data would be available. Uh, the uh, in Kubernetes, security is paramount, uh, so we do take care of security control and governance at two levels. One is basically at the level of uh, let's say all the notebooks that are created you you can make sure that who has access and uh, access to those notebooks that's one level the other is basically we have something called as apache ranger by which we can uh, we can help you uh, govern your data as well uh, which is stored on your cloud yeah basically but from a security aspect Cubol doesn't run any of the processing on uh, on its own cloud what it does is basically it creates the virtual machines or uh, uh, or containers basically on your cloud in your VPC. And this makes sure that the, your data never leaves your cloud basically. Uh, so your, all the compute happens on your cloud, all the storage happens on your cloud. It can, uh, uh, now if you see at the bottom of it, you can uh, connect to any enterprise data warehouse, enterprise business applications, streaming, or any internet of things, and you can get to those. Coming to the right side of it, you have got basically uh, the use, uh, the cue ball usage per se, where you have the common UI, uh, is, uh, the control plane on top of that, you will have a UI where users can get on and use cue ball. Then it has got APIs, then it has got SDK uh, uh, APIs where you can integrate the APIs with your application. Similarly, SDK, Java, based and Python, these SDKs are available, which can be used uh, and integrate directly into your code. And, uh, uh, the, the most used one, yeah, the ODSBC and, and JDBC uh, connectors, which you can use for Tableau, Looker, or Apache Superset, or Redash, uh, any of those open source, as well as uh, uh, the majorly available like Tableau and Power BI as well. Uh, so this is a high-level architecture of how Cuball looks like. Let, let me quickly move to demo. I've already logged in uh, into my Cubal platform. Uh, let me kind of uh, kind of jump onto clusters uh, to quickly talk about a quick configuration of Spark cluster. Okay, so, uh, so how the cluster, uh, I'm not sure if there's some cache, but yeah, it's doesn't come up. Okay, so I'll, I'll quickly check on that, but uh, if you look at this uh, Cubal, uh, this is basically the menu where you have got uh, a home, explore, analyze, you have got the workbench, uh, smart query templates. These are the various tools which can be used by any anybody, let's say a data uh, business analyst or uh, others to kind of uh, do their data analytics or visualization of data. The notebooks, we have two type of notebooks. We have Zeppelin notebooks, which is which was the de facto. Now we have Jupyter. It's no more beta, it's, it's Jupyter Notebooks. Then you have dashboards, where you can convert these notebooks into dashboards. 
uh, you have pipeline uh, you can create pipelines for uh, uh, pipelines for your real time uh, data ingestion or data processing we have pipelines which can uh, which can help you to create the data, real time data pipelines quickly within within a day, within few hours you should be able to kind of build a build an end to end pipeline uh, and it provides you a lot of uh, monitoring uh, as well then you have scheduler auto boss scheduler uh, which is available for you in for scheduling any of the let's let's say a notebook you, you should be able to schedule it uh, then clusters uh, we'll just go back to that in a second then you have got usage uh, basically uh, you can monitor the usage of clusters at any moment of time using usage it can give you a very fine grained uh, usage and that's one of the uh, one of the reasons why uh, customers use keyball because you have got a very good control on your cost as well as you should be able to, uh, anybody should be able to come back and see what is the usage of keyball using this uh, usage and they are cost explorer per se then you have control plane where you will be able to configure your uh, keyball environment as we said that keyball can integrate with uh, uh, integrates with your cloud uh, basically uh, your storage as well as processing so you will configure that and uh, environment i was talking about environment where you can install your all python libraries as and when requires and these are other factors which are used from a security perspective uh, manage users my profile prefer preferences and my accounts something which is used more from a uh, data governance and data perspective okay uh, now give me a second okay. Okay, so uh, if I go on to create clusters, yeah, now you can see uh, we have got multi multiple generations. So it's the first generation and second generation. You can click on the second generation, select the latest. Since we are talking about Spark, I'll just pick up uh, Spark, but you should be able to create the clusters uh, in similar way for others as well. So uh, as I was talking, you have Hadoop Pi, you have Presto, you have Airflow uh, from scheduling. Uh, so we have basic scheduler, which you can, run but at the same time you can use airflow uh, so we can use spark and we'll move to the next one uh, so you can see all the versions which are available you can select three or three uh, you can provide a cluster label apart from that you have the master nodes the minimum worker nodes maximum worker nodes uh, this is one of the de facto features of Cubal where it will help you make sure that you uh, can scale up and down based on the usage of the cluster yeah if you go to the compos compositions you have you can use uh, on demand instances spot nodes and spot box since we are using aws we are talking in spot uh, similarly minimum nodes what type of nodes you should be using uh, auto scaling uh, so once you start uh, scaling up and down what type of instances should be used should it be on demand or spot yeah those can be configured here uh, then if you can go to advanced configuration since we said that it's integrated with your cloud uh, the VPC configuration, the subnet configurations are provided over here. And there are a bunch of things that you can override in terms of how a Spark cluster behaves using the override Spark configuration, uh, Spark settings if you want to do, if you want to configure with Ranger or you want to provide default configuration of Spark and other stuff you can definitely do here. Uh, so this is a high level, uh, how you configure a Spark cluster. Then if you come back, uh, as I said, you have got this various notebooks. I have already uh, moved to Jupyter Notebook by clicking on Jupyter. So I've got a bunch of menu in this where uh, you can see this, uh, the various uh, notebooks that are available for you. You can start and stop. You can schedule a job. There's none scheduled here, but you can definitely go here and schedule the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Yeah? It will open the scheduler. Uh, you can configure the uh, Jupyter Notebook and basically you can write the cron for that you should be able to do that uh, uh, as i was talking about uh, you can collaborate you can integrate with the github uh, version you should be able to do that uh, these are the various environments that are available for you now how you want to kind of uh, design your uh, basically the notebook 
Uh, the, these are settings what you want to do, uh, slide type and others, uh, advanced tool settings. These are available for you. Uh, settings, uh, this is again launcher. I'll not go into that. Uh, how do you want to plot it? Uh, if you want to kind of, uh, th this over here is something which is, since we are integrated with S3 uh, in this case, uh, it shows you all those details of S3 uh, buckets and all those things. And so if you want to kind of, uh, Explore the data before starting using. You can do that. Similarly, as Jubal has got a built-in meta store, you should be able to browse through all the uh, uh, tables per se uh, available for you. And this is your help. Uh, if any of the example notebooks, those are available, will show up here. Okay. So since we have a couple of notebooks which are already available to us, so if you see, uh, I was talking about uh, how you can use markdowns. Uh, so here you have markdowns which will uh, help you uh, to write simple uh, see, um, uh, documentation. Yeah. So if you run this, this is what you will get. Uh, then uh, you will be able to use pandas uh, in the notebooks. Yeah. So uh, as you run, uh, basically uh, it runs on Spark. Uh, then you use Seaborn as we were talking about. There are numerous uh, plotting capabilities in it. So we use Seaborn here. Uh, to have a box plot uh, and these are uh, as i said these are simple examples that i'm i'm showing here but uh, yeah you can you can uh, write a large uh, use case uh, basically a use case which can uh, do a uh, a very large uh, a full ml based uh, full blown ml model or a model you can uh, do it uh, using uh, jupyter notebook uh, so you Again, here you can convert it to pandas by uh, by querying the data which is stored in uh, GitHub. Uh, this is Spark uh, using the tables which are uh, which are there, which are configured using the meta store in Kibol. So you should be able to query the data uh, in, uh, uh, using simple Spark SQL queries. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take a pause. As I said, you can do a lot of stuff uh, in in case of uh, using the Jupyter notebook. So we have. Uh, we have a couple of examples which you can start using it uh, from day one. Yeah? I'll take a pause, uh, see that if there are any uh, questions which are available. Uh, hope you have uh, kind of enjoyed the session, the webinar. I'll, I'll see if there are any questions. So one of the questions that has come up is basically, okay, let me just read through it. Uh, I think this is a very general question basically, but uh, how does integrating Jupyter with Spark on Cubal enhance the collaborative uh, uh, approach of a data science project? Yeah and what are the key benefits yeah so now i think we spoke about that that uh, when we were talking about uh, how jupyter integrates with spark and since jupyter has the capabilities of making sure that you are productive uh, you can visualize the data you can do your eda that is exploratory data analysis but at the same time uh, jupyter is not a processing engineer and uh, when you connect with jupyter with spark Spark, which can do processing much faster, as well as uh, Spark can process a large set of data much quicker. Yeah? So a combination of these two becomes very uh, a killer combination where you can process the data faster. At the same time, you can have interactive queries running as well as visualization, which is available to you. So that's that's one of the thing uh, that makes Jupyter and uh, Spark notebooks uh, uh, sorry, uh, Spark and Jupyter notebooks, uh, a killer combination. Apart from that, from a collaboration perspective, uh, you have capabilities of uh, writing the documentation, that is one. And second is basically, uh, you can integrate with uh, source controls like GitHub, uh, GitHub and Bitbucket and others. Uh, which will make sure that you can collaborate. Uh, collaborate. Okay, we have something more. I think one of the questions that has come up is basically uh, elaborate more on the Spark 3.3 performance. Uh, 
think we, we touched base on a couple of things, yeah. Like uh, the Bloom filters, that was the first one where it helps you kind of filter the data before uh, the join happens. Uh, so I'll, I'll encourage you to go ahead and read it on, on the uh, Spark website. Uh, but it does make sure that the size of the data reduces before the join happens, which makes sure that uh, uh, the, the amount of shuffle that happens reduces drastically. And it has, it has been designed to complement the dynamic uh, partition pruning, which is already available uh, in, uh, in Spark. Yeah. And the other is basically query execution enhancements that we spoke about. Apart from that, one more uh, important uh, uh, enhancement was basically uh, parquet complex data types. Uh, so it, uh, the, all the three features make sure that uh, Spark is much more performance uh, uh, performing as compared to what it was earlier. Okay, I'll, I think that's it for today. Thank you everybody for joining in today and have a good day ahead. Thank you, bye.